Uh, I am Dr. Ajaz Sen, and I will be talking about the role of biologic treatment in psoriasis. Uh, Rook's textbook of dermatology defines psoriasis as a group of disorders, diseases, uh, chronic, inflammatory, and characterized by arithmetic scaly plaques with the number of systemic manifestations. As we will see that it is a heterogeneous uh, in morphology, course, and similarly in the history. In 2014, WHO included psoriasis to be a universal non-communicable non disease and called for better care measures by the governments of the all member states. Psoriasis affects both sexes, and its prevalence varies from 2% to 5% in certain communities, even in 10%, uh, figure of 10% has been reported. As I said that it is heterogeneous in morphology. This is plaque type of psoriasis, which is seen in 80-85% of cases. Erythematous scaly plaques usually seen over scalp, sacral area, knee points, elbows, shins, palm soles may be affected. Psoriasis is not limited to skin only. It can affect joints in about 30 to 40 percent of the cases and other musculoskeletal um, involvement. In certain patients, it is associated with hypertension, obesity, ischemic heart disease, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and metabolic syndrome. Similarly, it adversely affects the quality of life, leading to anxiety, depression, and even uh, suicidal tendencies. We measure the disease of severity by uh, palm unit. The palm of patient that constitutes 1% of the body surface area. We will label the disease as mild if less than 3% of the body surface area is involved. Few side plaques are seen there, and it will not have much impact on the quality of life. 3 to 10 percent involvement defines the disease as moderate, which affects the quality of life, and the severe diseases, which affects more than 10 percent of the body surface areas, most, uh, and it has severe effect on quality of life as well. As I said earlier, that psoriasis is a chronic disease. If we follow the course of the disease, in half of the patient, disease has a relapsing and remitting course. We treat the patient, disease undergoes, relation, uh, undergoes remission, and then it relapses frequently. In a minority, uh, about 10% of the disease, when it is treated, there is a long period of remission. And in certain patients, the disease does not touch the baseline level. So it needs continuous treatment. Step. Uh, later treatment of the psoriasis, if the disease is limited, we use topical therapies. Phototherapy is used then next uh, in the ladder, and then different systemic therapies are available, which can uh, include conventional medicines, conventional drugs like methotrexate, cyclosporin, acetretin, and newer drugs like aprimilost, JAK inhibitors fumaric acid derivatives, and then biologics, which have revolutionized the treatment of psoriasis. This is a, a timeline. We can see that during the last 20 years, there, had been, there has been a treatment uh, shift in the treatment paradigm of psoriasis. Different biologics were invented and tried in psoriasis, starting from TNF inhibitors to interleukin-17 inhibitors, interleukin 23 and 12 inhibitors, and many more in the pipelines. And we can see that how the concept of treatment in psoriasis has changed from a broad-based generalized immunosuppression to a very target immunosuppression. 
from methotrexate which has a generalized which causes generalized immunosuppression to TNF inhibitors and then interleukin 12 and 23 inhibitors interleukin 17 inhibitors how these medicines particularly biologics they affect skin it is said that in predisposed persons who have genetic predisposition and disease is triggered by certain precipitating factors and it activates keratinocytes, natural T killer cells, macrophages and plasma cytoid dendritic cells. They release different cytokines including TNF, interferon gamma, interferon alpha, interleukin 6 and convert uh, 6 and convert myeloid plasma uh, pl dendritic cells into activated phase which further release interleukin 12 and interleukin 23 which act on the T helper cells, Th1 cells and T helper 17 cells and under the influence of interleukin 17 there is proliferation of keratinocytes, proliferation of vasculature and they result in the typical uh, presentation of the psoriasis. Here we can see that where these biologics act at the level of TNF inhibitor, then interleukin 23 inhibition, and the third one is interleukin 17 inhibitors. All these act on this inflammatory loop, a self perpetuating loop in psoriasis. How we set the treatment goals in psoriasis? The European consensus reports say that if a treatment, when we start a treatment, it should reduce the PASI, your PASI, that is psoriatic area severity index, less than 50 percent, uh, less than 50 percent within 10 to 12 weeks. If it, is not, if it does not uh, cause 50 percent reduction, then we should either increase the dose, reduce the dosing interval, or use combination therapy. Another parameter which has to be taken into account is effect on quality of life, that is dermatology life quality index, that it, it should reduce DLQI more than 5. And now the set target is PASI 75, that it should reduce the PASI score uh, by 75 percent and DLQI less than 5, then we will continue the treatment. This regimen or this treatment uh, set goals are used for describing a treatment. Now, FDA has approved 11 biologics for the treatment of psoriasis. There are four TNF inhibitors, then one uh, interleukin-12-23 inhibitor, four interleukin-23 inhibitors, and then one in, uh, three uh, interleukin-17 inhibitors. These are chimeric proteins, few, uh, chimeric monoclonal antibodies, fusion proteins, humanized antibodies, and human monoclonal antibodies with the tissue half-life varying from 3.5 day to 28 days. When to use biologics in psoriasis? There, there is a rule of 10 that if there is more than 10 percent body surface area involved, POSI score is more than 10 or the DLQI is more than 10, we would start or we would consider biologic. When traditional medicines they have failed, there are frequent relapses and remissions or these treatments are not tolerated or contraindicated. Psoriasis is associated with psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis is affecting certain specific sites like scalp, palm soles, nails, and intertriginous area. Sometimes we can change from one biologic to the other when there is either primary failure or when there is secondary failure. When we start a biologic, we decide to start a biologic, usually there is a, a, a one month or four week washout period is required when other drugs than methotrexate are being used. However, 
if a person is if a patient is on methotrexate or the there are chances that disease will relapse we can add uh, a biologic with methotrexate as well however when we shift to another biologics uh, or other treatments then we have to consider one month of washout period or the length of the treatment cycle whichever is the uh, more in duration we are not to use these biologics allergic reactions to biologics if there is significant infection of either kind there is increased risk of sepsis active tuberculosis and then there are indica uh, contraindication to tnf inhibitors if there is ana positive autoimmune diseases or a person is suf suffering from congestive cardiac failure uh, interleukin 17 inhibitors should not be given in patients of inflammatory bowel disease if there is active H hepatitis b c hiv pregnancy and breastfeeding are relative contraindication and if there has been a history of malignancy during past this is also a relative contraindication chronic exposure to ultraviolet light and photochemotherapy that also makes a relative contraindication how we screen on laboratory tests cbc lfts renal functions screening for different viral uh, infections ana anti double stranded dna and testing for tuberculosis even uh, by using igra when a, when we have selected a patient that fulfill all the criteria severe disease and there is no contraindication through the treatment we can start any of the uh, biologics available depending upon the excess affordability of the patient to bear the cost of the treatment tnf inhibitor interleukin um, 17 inhibitor which are available in pakistan or fortunately not all these biologics are available in pakistan and uh, this table shows the dose of different biologics during induction phase that is initial 12 to 16 weeks we use loading dose frequently and then during uh, maintenance phase we use uh, some dose at fixed intervals which may vary from weekly to fortnightly and uh, four weekly and in some cases even 12 weekly in certain cases we can go for dose adjustment that is we can either increase the dose or we can reduce the intervening uh, duration assessment of response is uh, uh, assessment of response is done by different scales like pazi pazi 75 means that there should be 75 percent reduction in the pazi score similarly body surface area that should um, reduce with treatment effect on quality of life and then different other criteria is used in specific sites monitoring is done according to uh, this criteria we look for the infections yearly go for testing for tuberculosis then as shown in this treatment when we review the uh, patient for efficacy and safety if he is responding to treatment we will continue the therapy we can go for dose escalation in non responding non responders we can change to the other biologics and in certain cases we can add other therapies or stop this treatment and go for conventional medicine some slides showing our experience however this is with sikukinumab that is il uh, 17 inhibitor before starting the treatment after five weeks and then after 25 uh, five weeks you can see uh, there is a remark uh, remarkable difference similarly this is the back of the patient another patient less responsive to the drug this is a patient whose shins responded to the sikukinumab therapy and then forearms this table this is a meta analysis which compares the efficacy of the treatment according to this meta analysis interleukin 23 inhibitors and interleukin 
17 inhibitors, they do better as compared to tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. This is comparison at the uh, after 40 to 60 weeks, long term comparison. You can see that uh, positive 75 percent uh, improvement was seen in uh, with IL-17 inhibitors and IL-23 inhibitors. Summary of efficacy, positive 75 response is seen in 40 to 90 percent of the cases. There is positive of head-to-head -head comparison. Ostinokimumab and other um, IL-17 inhibitors, they are better than the TNF inhibitors. Sikokinumab is better than the Sikokinumab. And newer uh, biologics, they have made possible 90 to 100 percent cure of the disease. There are certain cases, 11.6 percent, in which there is primary or secondary failure. They think that anti-drug antibodies and trough level uh, of the medicines, they should be measured. And this is the summary that these biologics are, avail are effective in all types of psoriasis, plaque type of psoriasis, scalp, nail, palmoplantar plantar psoriasis, and they are uh, they have rel they are relatively safe and well tolerated. Side effects, local side effects at the site of injection and uh, flu-like symptoms, they are more common. Infections and reactivation of infections have been seen. Certain risk um, side effects seen with TNF inhibitors, CCF, uh, and uh, even uh, malignancies, cutaneous malignancies. Suicidal ideation with brodalumab, uh, which is an IL-17 inhibitor, and worsening of IBD has been reported with sikokinumab. This is a comparative analysis of an Italian study. They say that serious side effects were seen in relatively very uh, less number of patients. Common side effects were uh, mild and local at the site of injection. There is a, another side effect that is paradoxical reaction to biologics. Certain biologics, when they are used for the treatment of psoriasis, they can uh, precipitate and other uh, autoimmune disease like uh, psoriatic arthritis, psoriasis, hederadenitis, purpura, inflammatory bowel disease. And this occurs in about 8 percent of the um, um, patients, treat, uh, they develop psoriatic arthritis. This shows that uh, there are many other pathways yet to be elucidated uh, in the pathogenesis of psoriasis. These can be combined, biologists can be combined with other therapies as well, topical steroid to methotrexate, acetratin and uh, phototherapy. They are useful in psoriasis as well. These are the uh, biologics approved by FDA for uh, use in children, and this is relatively lower doses used. They can be used in, during pregnancy as well and breastfeeding, although this is a relative contraindication. But TNF inhibitors, they, are, uh, they can be safely used. Similarly, IL-17 inhibitors, they also, it is said that they belong to the class B of the um, FDA uh, categories of drugs uh, for pregnancy, uh, use and during pregnancy. Patients should not be given live vaccinated, uh, live uh, vaccinations. However, COVID vaccination is, uh, COVID-2 vaccine has been recommended in these patients. And uh, non-live uh, uh, vaccination, they do not interfere with the biologics therapy. Now, con in conclusion, we can say that biologics, they are very effective and safe treatment in the uh, certain patients who can afford the treatment. They are effective and they are safe. The only limiting factor in our society is that the treatments are very uh, costly and the treatment cost has to be borne by the patient. If uh, that is not uh, the constraint, we can use biologics very effectively in psoriasis. Thank you very much.